Okay, today we come to the last sermon on judges on the team verses of the Lord, right? By this time, you can see, right, that uh, all the judges, right, were appointed or chosen by God, raised by God. Not because that they were perfect, right, but because God wants to use them. Right, and when God used them, He filled them with the Spirit of God and give them the power to overcome the enemies of Israel. So by doing so, actually God was basically securing His own promise to Abraham right, to preserve the Israelite. So it is because of the faithfulness of God right, that God saved Israel. So that's why despite... Uh, the Israelites sinning again and again and again, you know, numerous times, never repent. But yet, because of the promise of God, God will still protect His people. Right, so today we're going to look at the last judge in the book of Judges. And that is Samson. Right, and we are calling him the carnal. He's the person who represents you know, yeah, the carnality of men. Right? So let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this whole month as we look how men can be your vessels. And Lord, despite of different shortcomings, different sins, different disadvantage, Lord, that you can continue to use every one of them as your judge, as your people, Lord, to deliver them from the enemies. And Lord, this book tells us about the grace of our mighty God. Lord, it is your grace that you keep and preserve your people, that you raise people up, Lord, to continue this people group so that through this, out of these people, the Messiah shall come forth. So Lord, we thank you. Lord, how you have blessed us, how you have also warned us through this book. And so Lord, today as we look into Samson, may you again caution us about the carnality of men so that we will not fall into temptations and sins. We commit this time to you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, have you heard of Augustine? Right? He was a bishop of the place Hippo. Okay? Yeah, so if you look into his life, probably you will never think that he will become a bishop. Okay, probably you will not also think that he will become a Christian or a believer of God. Okay, so Augustine, actually he is a very well-known theologian now. Okay, because he has come up with many important doctrines about sins, about Trinity, about salvation. Right, that today the church of uh, the, the, all the churches today, right, has to depend on his theology to understand the Bible. Right, so Augustine was born in AD 354 to a pagan father, but he had a godly Christian mother who always prayed for him. Right, however, despite the mother, you know, always praying for him and trying to teach him the Christian stuff, Augustine was anything but Christian in his early years. Right, so his life was characterized by a series of mistresses. Right, so he flirted around basically. He drink, he flirt, right, and, and he actually uh, had an illegitimate son that was born to him. Right, so you can see that you know this is a man who, who weighs his life, who play around with his life. Right, so that's why uh, if you get to see his life, many people will say that hey, uh, how he will never come to know God, you know, this kind of people, right? Just uh, playing with women, flirting with women, and just drinking, and you know, 
right, enjoying life in the world. Right, the least thing right, will, will be becoming a Christian. Right, however, God spoke to him, you know, God spoke to him. Right, so God did not let this man go. Right, so you will see that God still wants to use him despite that, you know, he wastes his time away. And even at the times that he, uh, instead of following his mother, you know, about the Bible, right, he followed uh, those uh, anti Christian philosophies instead. He go and join them. Okay? And then there's a one time, of course, before this incident, there were certain messages, you know, sermon that actually he heard and, and spoke to him that it became, he had certain stirring in his heart. His heart started to move within him. But one critical movement, right, a moment in his life is this is that one day he was in the garden and and after he heard those messages you know he was despairing over his immoral lifestyle he started to feel bad you know yeah you know he should do something about his immoral lifestyle and then he heard the voice of a child right although there actually there was no no one around he said take up and read take up and read, right? And so he was one of those who take up the Bible, what you do? And just blindly open. Right? Some of us today like to do that, right? You know, you do not know what's the God's word for you, you know, you just anyhow open the Bible and then point. And that's what actually Augustine did. He take up, open the Bible and just look at the first verse that appeared to him. Okay, and then he found what Romans 13, 13 to 14. Okay, that was the verse that it appeared to him right before his eyes. He said, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Wow! You know, the word of God pierced right into his heart because that was what his lifestyle was about, isn't it? So the word of God was so accurate, you know, to him. So even though he was just picking up and just anyhow opened the Bible, but that verse really caught him. And because of this verse that he opened up and read and he really repent and then for his life was changed and subsequently of course he you know he learned about more about the Word of God and then he ultimately became the Bishop of Hippo and today he's actually known as the doctor of the church okay he's known as the doctor of the church that's why I say because he has so many important doctrines okay that taught the church of today right so he's a very important fellow when you study theology okay so some people actually once say you know he enjoyed he's very smart you know he enjoyed everything first before he come to know christ you know so he's like solomon you know he tried everything right he enjoy his life then after that convert and then come to know christ and follow christ faithfully okay so today we are looking at someone who you know like augustine and that is uh samson right so he also lead a very immoral lifestyle as well okay today uh you can see we have covered all these uh 12 judges we have looked through uh, five of them. Today is the fifth one. So all those smaller ones we did not look at, right? But we have looked at the, the five in this month. And today we look at Samson, right? He is from the tribe of Dan, right? And the main oppressor today is the Philistines. Right? The period is a very long period of oppression of 40 years, right? And the period of rest that led by Samson is 20. Okay?
Okay, let's look at some background. So as usual, the Israelite again did evil in the eyes of the Israelite. They never actually break free from the sin cycle. Right? It goes round and round because they didn't really repent. So uh, even some, at times when they fight the enemies or you know remove the altar, uh, after a while you come they, they didn't really change and uh, the sin cycle came back again. Okay, so they were under the oppression for 40 years, right, as mentioned, and God used uh, Samson to deliver the people. Right, so Samson is the last judge in the book, in this book. He's not the last judge of the Bible, but because as we read, you realize that uh, Samuel is also a judge, right? But in the book of Judges, right, Samson is the last judge, and he exhibits the worst morality. Right? So you can see uh, throughout the book of Judges, there is also a decline in morality among the judges. So the, the, the judges themselves get worse and worse in terms of their moral standard. Right? So Samson uh, is like a, a, a corrupted uh, judge, right? you can say that. Okay? So, you can see in the whole book of Judges, without God as Lord, even if you have God, but you have, you know, you don't see and treat God as Lord, things will just get worse. Right? There's no point you say, yeah, we have God. Oh, yes, I believe in God. But if God is not our Lord, then things will just get worse. Right? You can see this in the book of Judges again and again. Right? that the people of those days will do things they are right in their own eyes. And that is very similar to what we are looking at today. The people of today also, very similar, right? They will do things they are right in their own eyes. They don't care about the commandments of the law. Right? People just do what is right in their own eyes. Right? So that is something very scary for us. Right, when people just take things into their own hands. Okay, now we look at Samson. As we look at Samson, right, we will realize that he is a man intended for holiness. He's a man intended for holiness. Samson, it means his name means son. Right? So he was miraculously conceived after an angel of the Lord appeared to his parent mother, right, the, the wife of Man Noah from then. Right, so you can see the angel was speaking to the wife. We do not know her name. But this baby is going to be a very special one. It says here in verse 4, Now see to it that you drink no wine or fermented drink, and that you do not eat anything unclean. You will become pregnant and have a son, whose head is never to be touched by a razor because the boy is to be a Nazarite. Okay, so one very important criteria besides all other stuff, right, of being a Nazarite is this. It says his head is never to be touched by a razor. Right? One of the most critical things. Later, that's why you will see throughout the last part of the story, that is the ultimate thing that he committed that causes him to lose his power, right? So he did other things wrongly but did not lose his power. But yet, you know, he did the last thing which is the most critical thing that was said by the angel here, right? His head is never to be touched by a razor, right? Because he is dedicated to God from the womb. Right, he will take the lead in delivering Israel from the hands of the Philistines. So, he, you see, he has a purpose. Okay, his life is intended for holiness and he has a purpose. Right, he's supposed to deliver the people from the hands of the Philistines. Right, so you can see he was chosen by God from birth. Right, to be a Nazarite. This word Nazarite means to be consecrated or separated. That means you are setting this person apart from God. Right? Like what we are called church today. 
church, we call it ecclesia, an exemplary of people that is called out, right? Called out, separated, okay? So, Nazareth actually has that meaning, right, of being separated. It's just what the church today is supposed to be, right? As a Nazareth, you can see he's supposed to abstain from wine, fermented drink, no cutting of hair, no eating of food that is unclean, and you know, avoid defilement by contact with dead bodies. You can read that in number six for greater details. But these are the critical things, right, that he's supposed to obey. Right, so usually, yeah, and being a Nazarite is voluntary. That means uh, uh, the parent can dedicate his son to be a Nazarite for a certain period of time. That means uh, you no need to be a Nazarite for the whole lifetime. Okay, and the purpose of this usually is to supplement the lack of priests. Right, so you can see the priest must come from the line of Aaron. Right, but usually from the line of Aaron, it's not enough priests. Okay, so not even the Levites can be priests. Okay, it must be from the line of Aaron. So to supplement the lack of priests, uh, that's why there's this thing called Nazarite. Okay, so Nazarite people are actually people dedicated to the Lord and they help in the temple of God. Okay, so but for Samson, it was a calling for a lifetime. Okay, it's dedicated to God from the womb. From the womb, okay, so from the for a lifetime. Okay, so even before he was born already, dedicated him, set apart to be a Nazarite. Okay, like similar to Samuel and John the Baptist. Okay, so the Lord has planned to use him to deliver Israel right from the Philistine using this man. Right, so he's, he's supposed to be an example of holiness for the people of Israel. Right, and you can see the Bible it tells us that the Spirit of the Lord stirred him since young. So it means that the, the Lord has been, you know, moving within him. And this man has a very special ability, and that is, he's like Superman. Okay? He's like Superman. He has super power eh? since young. Okay, and you can see here, among the human race, the unique Nazarite is the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? And an example of Nazarite in the New Testament right, is basically Lord Jesus. Right, so Nazarite is actually a type of Jesus Christ. Okay, it's a type of Christ. Okay, in his uh, living absolutely for God. Right, to show that how human needs to be to live like Christ, and, and it is fulfilled in Christ, living absolutely fully for God in his humanity. Right, that's very important. Okay, so this is. Also, the intended purpose of God when He called us to follow Him. Right? God intended us to be holy. Right? So we are intended to live a holy life. And 1 Peter 1, chapter 15, verse 16 to 16, it says, But as He who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it's written, Because be holy, for I am holy. Right? So God wants us, all of us, to be holy. We are intended to live a holy life. In Ephesians 4, chapter 1, it says, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. To live that life worthy of the calling. Okay, so this is an example. I found this on the internet. It says the, the modern Nazarite vow. Okay, basically it's talking, right? In the Nazarite's life, about the importance about discipline, right? For example, abstinence from wine, strong drink. The the equivalent for today is having the self control, the discipline to prevent addiction. Uh, okay, how about defilement from corpse 
He talks about integrity to stay pure, to pursue a, a holy standard. How about uncut hair? He talks about image, basically. Right? Important to refuse to allow fashion or lead, looks to lead you. Right? So, I found that this is quite interesting and in how we can actually apply the Nazarite vow in our current days. Right? Because God has intended all of us to be holy. Okay, but Samson did the opposite, right? He was intended for holiness, but he ended up corrupted in carnality. So what he did is totally the opposite of what God intended for him because he lived a very presumptuous life. Okay, now let's go through quickly the story of Samson. Okay, because it's a very long one. Firstly, we can see he insisted a foreign wife. Right, so you can see Philistine people have been oppressing the Israelites for 40 years, right? And but then Samson broke the law by getting a foreign wife, despite his parents told him not to. His parents told him, hey, better choose one from the Israelites, but he the one. Right? What did he do? He said, he told his parents, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timna. Now, get her for me as my wife. Say, now get her. Now get her. Uh, he, she, he wants the woman immediately. Right? So, and you know, this is her, what? He, he already know this is a Philistine woman. He said, I want a Philistine woman. He know that this woman is not, right, from Israel. So he was breaking the law by getting a foreign wife. And he wants, he wanted her immediately, right? And you can see to satisfy his own desire for a woman, right? Which we will see later, it, it will keep coming back. Next, we see that he killed a lion. On his way to visit a woman together with his parents, he met a young lion. Right? And then what happened? This, ah, he saw this lion coming and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he tore up the lion with his bare hands. Right? Without the parents' knowledge. Right? His parents was probably somewhere. Right? It was so easy for him. Right? Because he's has superpower from the Lord, right? So he killed this uh, lion, right? When you kill the lion, what happened? It becomes a dead body, right? As a Nazarite, it's not supposed to come near to any dead bodies, right? And that is not enough, okay? Sometime later, he went to marry the woman. The woman in Tinna, right? So what happened? Because after some time, ah, this lion carcass, there's a beehive, right? Beehive started to form inside this the body of the the the, the, the carcass of the lion, right? Then what happened? Right, he scooped up the honey with his bare hands and ate it. Oh, gross, huh? Right, gross. This lion carcass, it must be quite smelly, but yet, you know, he just still took up the honey and with his hand and ate as he went along. Right, so not just that, he also passed some to his parents. Okay, he also passed some of this honey to his parents and without telling them that he was from a lion's carcass. Okay, so again, by doing so, he broke the vow, the Nazarite vow, by touching a dead body and, and it thing fermented honey right so you can see he broke all these rules okay but god is gracious you know he broke the vow and this uh, he, he's he still got the power you know? okay he still got the power he did not lose the power yet even though he broke all this uh vow right at this time okay and then what he gave a reader to solve okay on his wedding feast he then gave a red a reader to his 30 cam, 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 uh, companions based on the lion and the honey incident. Okay, so he said, out of the eater, something to eat, 
out of the strong something sweet. Guess, calculate quickly, guess. Right, guess what is the answer. Right, so nobody could guess, right? So the bet was what? 30 linen garments and 30 sets of clothes and to be soft in seven days. Right, so on the fourth day, the man actually threatened his wife. Okay, so you meant these 30 companions, they are Philistines. His wife, Philistines. Right, so they threatened his wife to, to get the answer. If not, she and her father household would be burned. Right, so can know what happened. Right, the wife actually got the answer. Right, and told these people, told the 30 companions, and they warned the bear. Right, so Samson found out, they really cheated. And then here again, he tells us the Spirit of God. You can see the Spirit of God is always at work. So, actually, what God, the Spirit of God was using Samson. It's not that he was doing something right, right? Not because Samson did right, because here, wow, he impulsively struck down 30 men from Ashkelon, okay, somewhere near that place, took their clothes, right, and gave them to these 30 companions, right? So, God used small pockets of these incidents to set Israelite free from the oppression of the Philistines. Right, so you can say actually God was using the selfishness of Samson to accomplish his greater purpose to free the Israelite. So here we must not get it wrongly. Okay, Samson was not doing something right. Okay, because he 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 go and you know he lose the bet, he go and kill some other 30 people, get their clothes and give to these 30 companions. Okay. When they solve the reader by getting the answer from his wife. Ah, next major event, he burned down the fields. Okay, his wife was given to one of the companions by his father-in-law, by the wife's father. Okay. So and then the father said, "Now this his wife is already given, right?" And offer Samson a younger sister. Instead, wow, Samson was very, very angry. He was so angry that then what he do? He go and catch foxes. You know, very funny thing, right? Right. So he don't go and, you know, go and uh, set the fire himself. <laughs> right. So today, if he did that, you know, he will be complained, you know, by all the uh, animal rights watcher, right? So he catch three hundred foxes tie their tails in pairs, you can see here in the picture, right, and then fasten a torch to every pair, and then set the torch on fire, okay? He lit the torch and then let the foxes loose in the standing grain of the Philistines, right? So you can see, because it was so hot and, you know, it's burning, you know, it's burning the, the foxes, you know, 300 foxes got burned, got killed in this whole processes, right? So, you can see, through this, when the foxes were panicking, they were running around everywhere, they burned down, okay, the, all the, the grains uh, and the vineyards and the olive groves of the Philistines. So, it burned down, it totally destroyed the food, okay, of the Philistines, so he got it was a revenge. Here you can see he was taking a revenge, okay, on the Philistine. Right? So again, he, he, he was moving from a very selfish point of view, right, to take revenge. But again, God used him, used his selfishness, selfishness to destroy the crops of, of the uh, Philistine. Okay, next, the revenge, revenge of Philistines. Now, when they were, all these fields were burned, the Philistines were furious. Right? And what did they do? They burned Samson's wife and his father. They burned. Oh, so you can see, uh, these Philistines were also very cruel. Straight away, they got angry, burned Samson's wife and the father. Right? And Samson, therefore, in revenge, attacked them viciously and slaughtered many of them. 
Okay, he attacked them. Then after that, oh, after he attacked them, he scared, you know. He scared, what happened? He, he ran away. He actually, he ran away. He hid himself in a cave, okay, at the a, at a rock of Eden in, in, in the place there. Okay, and then what happened? And then this, this cave was basically in the uh, boundary of Judah. So the Philistines actually went to Judah and asked them to hand Samson over. Okay? Judah at that time actually they have quite a number of people because what Judah is the biggest tribe. Right? They were the strongest group of people. Remember in the first sermon that we see even Judah is the one who who firstly went out to fight. But by this time, right, when you read uh, in this period of time, when the Philistines threatened Judah, what happened? Right? They sent, the Judah sent men to arrest Samson. Instead of fighting the enemy, they give their own men over. Right? So they give this Samson over. And, and you know, and Samson said, okay, yeah, make sure you don't kill me. You just tie me up and hand me over to them. Right? So you can see here also, by this time, Judah has also been corrupted. They have no longer the power, the belief, the faith to fight for God, to fight the Philistines. They just hand Samson over. And here, when, when, when Samson was being tied and hand over to the Philistine, what happened? Ah, you can see this phrase again, the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him and he killed a thousand men. And the Bible verse tells us, it says here, with a fresh jawbone of a donkey. Right? Yeah, so you see he what he, he used as a weapon? A fresh jawbone of a donkey. Not necessarily mean that he killed a donkey, but it definitely means that he again broke the vow by touching a dead body again. Okay, because it's a fresh jawbone. It's a fresh jawbone, meaning that the donkey probably just died not long ago. Right, so he come in contact with this dead body. He did not use other weapons, but then he chose, you see, the, uh, a fresh jawbone, right, which caused him to actually broke the vow. But yet, he did not lose his power. Okay, he did not raise his lose his power at this point of time yet. Right, so the spirit of God again used him to fight against the Philistine, and a thousand men was being killed. Right. And after that, wow, he was very thirsty. You know, he said, hey, oh God, no. you know, he would die, you know, because he was so thirsty. And the Lord actually opened up a spring for him and refreshed him with spring water. So, of course, you can see here that uh, Samson still know how to cry out to the Lord. And the Lord actually blessed him with the spring water. Right? The next thing that we see. Right, one day he went to Gaza and committed adultery by sleeping with a prostitute. Right, so he slept with a prostitute. Remember, he was married. Okay, even though his wife was given away, so called they were not you know, separated, they were not divorced. But here, of course, the main thing here, he was sleeping with a prostitute. Okay, and then the people of Gaza actually wanted to kill him at dawn, you know, after he woke up. But then he broke out from the city gate at midnight. He, he knew, right? He knew that the people were looking for him. And, and you know, you can see this, this picture here, right? So when he ran away, what did he do? He was, again, so powerful, right? He took hold of the doors of the gate of the city and the two poles and pulled them up. Okay, so you, you can see the whole city gate he can raise up, you know. Right, the city gate is so big, so heavy. He's so strong. 
like Superman, right? And then carry them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron, right? So he escaped uh, from the people of Gaza. But here, the important thing that we see is that, you know, he committed adultery, his immoral life that is very obvious here, right? And then next, that's not enough, right? The Bible tells us sometime later, he fell in love with a woman, right? So, though he was married, he looked for a prostitute, then after that, again, looked for and fell in love with another woman, right? So he can move from woman to woman. This one is this woman, this lady is called Delila, right? From the valley of Sorek. Right, and this woman was out to deceive him. Right, so in in this uh, process, right, he actually committed adultery again with a foreign woman. Okay, again, this is a Philistine. Right, so what happened? The rulers of the Philistine bride, Delila, to Leo Samson to tell her the secret of his strength. Right, so you know, again, this lady, right, is a Philistine. So obviously, you want to get the answer, the secret of his power, right, he asked uh, the lady to do it. Right, so because what it says, the Chinese says, Ying Xiong Nan Guo Mei Ren Guan Lai. Right, so it's hard for a hero, right, to run away from the leo of woman. Right, and here, this woman will, will get what? Wow, each of them, it says, uh, each of them, each of the rulers is going to pay her 1,100 shekels of silver, which is about 13 kg. Well, that's a lot, you know. Each of the rulers is going to give her 13 kg. So that's why this girl is out there to get the secret out of Samson. Right, so for three times, I'm not going to... Uh, go into the the, 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 the ways that uh, Dalila actually uh, tried to deceive uh, Samson, right? But again and again, and you can see the foolishness of of uh, Samson because it happened three times already, right? Uh, one, uh, what's the word? Once bitten, twice shy already, right? You say, you know? But three times, you know, and you say every time you fail, uh, they, uh, you know? The Delilah will shout and call for the Philistine, uh, come out now, catch hold of him. You know, so it was very obvious uh, that this Delilah were working with the rulers of the Philistine to catch him. But yet, after three times, right, the Bible tells us that Samson was sick about her wife keep nagging. Right, keep nagging at him and you know and asking him again and again. So finally, right, for three times he managed to get away, but then he told Delilah everything the fourth time. He gave up the secret about the razor. And that is the ultimate thing. Okay? That's what you can see in the earlier, the right, the razor must not touch the hand as said by the, the angel, right? So, while, while, while uh, Samson was sleeping, his hair was shaved off, right? And immediately, he, he lose his strength, right? And the Bible tells us the Lord left him. It's a very sad thing, right? So, he was set apart for God, right? Intended for holiness. And this is the ultimate thing. Although, oh, other things that he has broken. But one very important thing that he was ultimately to get was about his hair. Because this, you know, his hair, once he shaved off his hair, what happened? He lose all his power. Right? He has that power because the Lord was with him. And here, it tells us that the Lord has left him. Right? And the Philistines see, sees him, gouge out his eyes and took him to Gaza. Right, so he was blinded, you know, they take out, gouge out his eyes. Right, and, and it reminds us of the verse in, in what Jesus said, you know. He says, if your eyes cause you to sin, uh, it's better to gouge out your eyes. It's better to take out your eyes, be blind. 
right? And that's what happened to, to, to Samson, you know, because his eyes caused him to lust after woman, right? And therefore, he, the, there's also a lesson for him to learn, right? The Philistine ultimately got out his eyes, right? And, and then they bound him with bronze shackles and, and set him to grind grain in the prison, right? So basically, it's a, doing hard work, right? All the labor work because he, he, he has power, right? But at that time, he has, he's still a big man, but yet he has lost his superpower, right? But then they still chain him up and make him grind grain in the prison, right? So while, while they, he was serving his sentence in the prison, what happened? His hair started to grow back. Right? So we can see here he got some short hair. Right? So he got some his hair started to grow back. Right? When his hair started to grow back, what happened? It also signifies the power is gradually coming back to him. Right? The Lord was gracious. When his hair started to grow back, his power also started to come back. Okay, so the next thing, the final thing that he did was to tore down the Dagon temple. Right? Okay, so the Philistine, wow, with how many? 3,000 people and all the religious leaders gather, you know, to offer a great sacrifice to the god Dagon. That's their god that they worship. Okay, the god of the Philistine. And Samson was brought out to entertain them. Wow, this is, uh, they want to parade Samson. To show to the rest that how this Superman has finally been caught, right? So, ah, Samson said what? No, he told the attendant, he said, place him where the supporting pillars were. Okay, so they changed him to where the supporting pillars were. And then what? He prayed. He prayed to the Lord. He prayed, asked the Lord to remember him. He prayed to the Lord to for strength one last time so that he could perish together with the Philistines. Right? And what happened? The temple came down on the rulers and all the people in it. And thus, it says the Bible verse tells us that he killed more people when he died than while he lived. Right? So, wow. In his final gasp of breath, okay, the Lord Return him the power and destroy the Dagon temple, right? And all the people, right, more than 3,000, right, were all killed. So he, he actually destroyed the Philistines and stopped them from oppressing Israel at that time, right? So he led Israel for 20 years, giving them 20 years of peace. Right, so we can see this Samson was corrupted in carnality. Just a few things to just summarize what we have seen in the story. Firstly, it's unrestrained relationship. Samson had a lust for woman and sought instant gratification of his fleshly desires. He has the lust of the eyes after woman. Right? He commit adultery and married a foreigner. Right? And you see, God does not want us to be yoked with an unbeliever. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Right? So remember, ah, there will be temptation. Right? Maybe you will see a non-Christian Wow, very beautiful, right? And you like the girl, right? Or like the man, right? You will see, right, that temptations may come. And we may be carried away. So we must remember the commandment of the Lord to tell us, do not be yoked with an unbeliever. Right? And God wants us to stay morally pure. 
right in uh, Hebrew chapter 13 it says uh, marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral right so those who are married right God wants us to stay morally pure the marriage bed be kept pure right so we need to remember we should not have unrestrained relationship right so relationship boy girl relationship must be built in the context of the word of god secondly you can see samson has the disregard for god he disregard god in many ways right he defiled himself by eating honey from a dead carcass of a lion uh, killing the thousand Philistines with the fresh jawbone, right? He discard the Nazarite vow, basically, right? So whether whichever portion that happened in his life, you can see he he broke the vow again and again. He he actually did not even find a need to to honor his vow. That's why he happily, you know, so presumptuously, yeah, commit all these sins. He didn't say, hey, ah, yeah, should I do this? He didn't even struggle. Right? You can see he didn't even struggle. He said, hey, ah, should I do this? Should I marry a foreign woman? Should I sleep with a prostitute? You know? He didn't. He didn't. He no struggle at all. He has total uh, he had no no regard for for God at all. Right? John 14, verse 21 says, Those who have my commandments and Keep them are those who love me. So if you love God, you will keep His commandments. Right? And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Right? So you want God to reveal to you, love Him and keep His commandments. Right? So live without the fear of God is the abuse of freedom if we live our life right without the fear of god is the uh, abuse of the freedom that god has given us right and next we see him very impulsive and fleshly right so he impulsively he killed the 30 men to give their clothes to those who who saw the riddle you know so you can see it's like these 30 other men you know don't even know what happened. Suddenly got killed in order to have all their clothes raided, you know, to be given to somebody else after this Samson was betrayed by his wife. And then, you know, he willfully burned down the standing grains, right, by this funny method of catching foxes, right, with killing 300 foxes, right. So you can see he was a man basically directed by his flesh, rather by the Spirit of God. Right? So, believers in Jesus Christ are actually in the realm of the Spirit. Romans 8 verse 9 says, You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Right? So, we must have the Spirit of God to direct us to live by the Spirit of God. And so we are not in the realm of the flesh. Right? And we see here again Sam Samson viciously attacked the Philistine and killed many after they burned his wife and father in nature. So this is a revenge. Right? And then killed another thousand using a fresh jawbone, jaw bone, right? Just now we see. Right, so you can see character actually matters and power without character can be dangerous. Right, power without character is dangerous. So in Galatians 5 verse 22 to 23, you talk about what? The fruit of the Spirit. Right, so we need to have the fruit of, Holy, uh, of the Holy Spirit. So the holiness in our life will bring forth the fruit of the Spirit in our life. Right, so we shouldn't be corrupted in carnality okay so as we look at the life of judges uh, of, of Samson and as you look through the whole book of judges 
there are some important message that I want all of us to bring back today. Right, firstly is to back to God's control. Right? In the book of Judges, we see actually God is sovereign. We see the sovereignty of God. So no matter what happened on earth, God's plan cannot be thwarted by sinful men. Right? So 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 God can use any sinful man to accomplish his plan, his purpose. Right? So, so even sometimes men can, you know, do, do things wrongly, did not obey the Lord, but yet God can still use the situation in different ways to finish and accomplish his plan. Right, so what we need to know is to learn to submit to the plan of God. We must get back to God's control, right? Be directed by the Spirit. Right, so here it says, uh, our job right, is to reflect the love, goodness, grace and glory of Christ to a broken world. Everything else is in the firm and faithful hands of our living God. Right, everything is in the hands of our living God. Right, so let us submit to the plan of God that be directed by the Spirit under the control of our Lord. Secondly, back to God's standard. Right, we need to get back to the standard of God. Right, this the book of Judges tell us the importance of the holiness of God. God intended for His people to be holy. Right, especially from this episode in Samson's life. Holiness is key, right? He has intended Samson to be an example for the people to be serving the Lord in the temple, but yet he wastes away his life. Okay? So God's presence should never be taken for granted. Don't take God's grace for granted, His presence for granted. Right? We should obey the Word of God, keep the Word of God, live a holy life. Psalms 24, verse 3 and 4 says, Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in His holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. Right? We need to redeem God's standard right, in our life. Thirdly, back to God's embrace. Right? Come back to God's embrace. Here we see the grace of God. Right in the book of Judges, we see there's so much grace of God. And especially in the life of Samson, though even though he was so immoral, he was so sinful, but yet there is still full of grace of God. God is patient. You see, God is patient with our disobedience. God waits for us to return back to Him. He is waiting for us. And that's why even, you know, this crucial moment of uh, Samson is so important because he is turning back to God. Even at the last minute of his life, he wants to be used by God. He's, he came back to the Lord before he died. He wants God to use him to fight back the Philistines. You can see God still empowers and uses us through His Spirit. Right? So even though today we are all still sinful, right? God still empowers and, and uses us through His Spirit. Right? You can see the grace of our God. So, family, let us repent and return to Him. Very important. We know all of our sins. We've got to quickly repent and return back to our God. Return to His embrace. Right, and never take His grace for granted. It says, God's grace here is not an excuse to sin, but rather a reason to love and serve Him more fully. Right, so grace is not an excuse to sin, but a reason to love and serve Him more fully. Right, in closing, we can see here in Hebrews 11, you can see here, Samson's name, right? Samson's name is appeared in the list of 
faithful people. God still use him, redeem him. And because he ultimately he come back to God. He, he still accomplish the purpose of God to deliver the Israelites. Right? What can we say? We can only stand amazed at the grace of our God. He is the one today who can cleanse us, purify us. Right? So let us live a holy life. Come back to our God, our holy God. Come back to His embrace. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank You that indeed it is your sovereignty that watch over all of us, that makes all things in control. Help us to come back to your control, come back, Lord, to your standard, and come back to your embrace. Lord, we commit all of our lives to you. You know we are all sinful people. But yet, Lord, in your graciousness, you still use us to accomplish your faith, your purpose. So, Lord, may you find us faithful. Hopefully, the day that we meet you face to face, Lord, our names will be listed as Samson, as all these other people like Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, all these judges. Lord, to be found faithful in your sight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for using us as your vessels. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.